Hey, what's happening? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and I'm finally back home, man. So now it's time to hit the ground running. I'm super excited. Of course, we have this upcoming game against the Cardinals that I will be live streaming for all four quarters. Coming with a game preview for that as well. And I'm also, of course, going to do a game review, and we'll have the call in live stream after every game this season. But today, we're here to talk about the Washington Commanders Week 1 depth chart versus the Cardinals really interesting also sam howell was voted captain by his teammates is it as significant as we think it is it actually is a little bit we'll get to look at some other quarterbacks that weren't named captain by their teammates also the washington commander signed wide receiver jamison crowder there's a positive terry mclaurin injury update there's some optimism as far as that goes and a lot of other stuff this is almost like a rico report because some of the other stuff that we're going to talk about later in the video are things that happened recently and pretty random but i also have some primary topics some main topics that i definitely want to do deep dives into but before we do of course make sure you stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notified vacation each and every time i release an informative and opinionated video just like this one man i'm super excited man we are here the regular season we have football y'all and i have a great feeling that we should start out one and oh new owner new quarterback new offensive coordinator things are filling up and again i have y'all covered for everything i'm working on a game preview that i'll probably come out with tomorrow breaking down everything that's going on with the cardinals all of their recent trades and releasing players and things like that and why we should have a major advantage over them going into that game all of that type of stuff so man stay tuned and without further ado let's get it you tell your family you can be a commander All right, so here's the Commander's Week 1 depth chart, and this is really interesting. First of all, I like the fact that we just stopped lying to ourselves, and now our base defense includes a slot corner rather than three linebackers. Thank you. We have one Mike linebacker, one outside linebacker, and then we have three corners on the field the majority of the time anyway, and now that's included in our depth charts. They've been doing that all offseason, but I just wanted to make sure that once we have our official depth chart heading into a, a regular season game, like a real, real depth chart that they had that included, and then I felt like it was good to talk about it. Of course, other really notable things is that Ricky Strongberg is the backup center. It's been believed that Tyler Larson was ahead of him on the depth chart for a lot of times, especially back in that depth chart that we did enter in the preseason. Tyler Larson was ahead of him. Now Ricky Strongberg is officially the backup center to Nick Gates, which shows that the preseason was big for him. Those joint practices against the Ravens, um, some of those training camp practices since the preseason started, all of those were monumental because at first he started way, way back up. And then he's worked his way up bit by bit and then now he's showing potential as a guard as a center um i felt like it was pretty obvious that he was going to make the 53 man roster but the fact that he's the direct backup center to nick gates where if he gets hurt or something happens ricky strongberg is your starting center and i think that's really interesting of course sadiq charles won the starting left guard spot over chris paul thought that was pretty interesting diami brown is an outside receiver along with terry mclaurin dax milne is the backup slot receiver to curtis samuel byron pringle is the backup outside receiver to jahan dotson with mitchell tinsley right behind him i thought that was pretty interesting as well you already know your running backs you already know the rest of your offensive line of course trent scott is your backup tackle um cornelius lucas is higher on the depth chart if there's an injury to either of the tackles cornelius lucas will step in at left tackle or right tackle trent scott is immediately the backup to him going to the defensive side again the fact that we have a slot corner as our starting corner is really interesting which makes me think like which one is it? Is it the Kendall Fuller or the Emmanuel Forbes one? Because Danny Johnson, we see him as more of a slot corner. Jatavius Martin is definitely more of a slot corner. Free safety, if anything. Um, but apparently, Benjamin St. Juice, who has Christian Holmes behind him, which makes sense body type wise. Those are our only two like big six foot three corners. Um, that Technically, he's supposed to be in one in the slot. When we have three corners out there at the same time, Kendall Fuller, Emmanuel Forbes, and Benjamin St. Juice, so far from what we've seen in practices and preseason games and things like that, Benjamin St. Juice is our starting slot corner. So it's interesting that Jotavius Martin and Danny Johnson are both. Neither of those guys are behind Benjamin St. Juice on the depth chart, but I'm guessing that just doesn't really matter 
that much. And then Percy Butler is the direct backup to Derek Forrest, and Jeremy Reed is the direct backup to Cameron Curl. But at the end of the day, a lot of that stuff doesn't really matter as far as depth goes. They just have to put those names there just so you can see all of the names. But at the end of the day, man, if say Derek Forrest ends up getting hurt, maybe Jeremy Reed slides the free safety. You never know. Cameron Curl gets hurt. Maybe Percy Butler takes over for him. So it's not like Percy Butler is pure free safety. Jeremy Reed is pure strong safety. Jartavius Martin is pure slot corner. Don't read into that too much. Um, and then also also, Jay Smith Williams, who started what 14 games for us last year. Of course, he's the backup to Chase Young. We still got to see if Chase Young is ready to start. If not, Jay Smith Williams is your week one starter again, just like last season. And then KJ Henry's behind him, which is interesting because I thought once we drafted KJ Henry and then I saw a few early training camp practices, I thought KJ Henry was going to be good enough to be the direct backup to Chase Young, but apparently he hasn't done enough. Anything Andre Jones has shined the most throughout this entire offseason, and he's the backup behind Casey Tuhill, who's technically the backup to Monster. So, but again, and don't read into these things too much because if there's an injury to Montez Sweat and if Chase Young is healthy enough to play, James Smith Williams will go replace Montez Sweat. It wouldn't just directly be case two. It's going to be a healthy balance and rotation of a lot of these guys. It's sad that FL Bada right now is on the IR because I feel like he would get a lot of meaningful snaps here because he's arguably our most explosive pass rusher on this depth chart. Between him and Andre Jones have the biggest flashes, the highest ceiling. And then linebacker wise, of course, Cody Barton is just starting Mike. He's going to be the one with the green out in his helmet calling the plays he's gonna have the headset on listening directly from jack del rio any given down jamin davis is just gonna be just go out there and be athletic cover somebody stop the run but move more think less which is a better situation for jamin davis to be in and of course david mayo's your backup mike because he's a good run stopper clee cutson's your backup outside linebacker because he's better in pass coverage so there you go with those of course your starting kick returners are antonio gibson and byron pringle i'm a big fan of that i think that's really significant and then also dax milne is your starting punt returner i'm perfectly fine with that but what's really interesting is that jahan dotson is the backup punt returner of dax milne is hurt that's really interesting but we also have another punt return candidate which we'll talk about soon in the video speaking of that soon next up the commanders hosted jamison crowder on a free agent visit yesterday september 5th and remember he began his career with washington we also worked out kadron smith and kyle sole so those are players that i haven't heard that we've signed to practice squad or anything so just to let you know we worked those guys out but it seems like nothing came from it but then today as of eight something this morning the commanders signed wide receiver jamison crowder to their practice squad though we signed jamison crowder but to the practice squad not to the 53 man roster it's not like he's gonna play week one against the arizona cardinals i doubt it but remember again this is the same team that drafted them and you never know we may call him up from the practice squad pretty soon we drafted him back in 2015 in the fourth round he proved to be a steal for a couple of years man it was looking like man that's a big steal but then ended up not panning out too well um he's just been a player that's just really been riddled with injuries that's really what's been holding them back because it's not the talent um he's a veteran guy smart route runner he can also be a really good punt returner if you need him to be but it's just been injuries man everywhere that he's gone and even though he's been on a lot of other teams his best years were with washington of course i mean the 2015 and 2018 run he had with us were easily his best years then he went to the jets for two years he went to the bills for one year and then he was with the giants at the beginning of this year but they ended up cutting him and then now he made his way back to the washington well now it's the commanders when he left we weren't the commanders but now that when he's back we are the commanders so same burgundy and gold but different name um but it's also really interesting too because if you think about his history and his path to where he's ended up back here we tried to replace him with trey quinn which is just crazy and then ultimately trey quinn ended up basically getting replaced with dax milne and now jamison crowder comes back and if he can stay healthy man we may have something cooking but you got to analyze the whole situation because I thought we were only keeping six receivers on the 53-man roster. We ended up keeping seven. And then we already have two wide receivers on the practice squad. So now between the practice squad and our 53-man roster, adding in Jamison Crowder, we have 10 receivers right now. 10 of them, which is just insane right now. But you got to remember, at one point in time, in one of those years that he was still one of our receivers, he was rated the best slot receiver in the NFL by Pro Football Focus. I can't remember the exact year, but man, there was one year where they loved him. Just like Pro Football Focus loves Kendall Fuller, um, they, they had that same love for Jamison Crowder. Just like Cameron Curl, Derek Forrest, there are a few guys on our team that Pro Football Focus just absolutely love. Remember, Jamison Crowder was one of those guys. Now, punt return-wise, 
guys I think is really interesting because I mean if we're if he's competing directly with Dax Milne to be our backup slot to Jamison Crowder right now Dax Milne easily has the advantage he's our starting punt returner and he's our backup slot to Curtis Samuel but again Jamison Crowder on his best day is a better slot on his best day a better punt returner but is he dependable enough like Dax Milne to stay healthy does he know the system I and mean, of course he doesn't know Eric Bieniemy's offense as well as Dax Milne knows it of course Sam Howe doesn't have as much chemistry with Jamison Crowder as he has with Dax Mill. So it's really interesting. Remember some stats. He has 415 career catches in the slot. He's returned punts, 7.9 yards per punt return average in three years with the Washington Redskins. And he's returned 11 since leaving the Commanders, including nine for 100 yards in four games with Buffalo last year. So he's still shown some punt return ability since he's been gone, at the very least with the Buffalo Bills. It's like he still has the talent, it's still in him. But again, big emphasis on injuries i mean just to go down his injury history some of these are petty but i mean 20 october 29th missed the game with a hamstring injury july 30th 2017 missed a week of camp practice due to an uh, uh, unspecified hamstring injury august 19th 2016 sat out the final two preseason games with a sore knee august 6th 2016 missed some camp workouts as well october 8th 2018 sustained a high right ankle sprain in week five and missed the next seven games september 16 2020 crowder missed two games due to a hamstring injury october 21st 2020 injured his groin in practice ahead of the week seven game against the bills and he missed two games because of it december 10th 2020 played week 14 game through injury with both of his calves um so shouts out to him for toughing that out and playing through it and then september 1st 2021 suffered a groin injury during the preseason he missed the next three games december 22nd 2021 crowder missed two straight games with a calf injury he sustained ahead of the week 16 game and then january 9th 2022 crowder aggravated his calf issues which sidelined him in week 16 and 17 and then october 2nd 2022 crowder was carted off with an air cast on his legs Again, it's not the talent, it's just the injury history. So that's why we're giving him a chance on the practice squad. If he can show that he can stay healthy, learn Eric Beardy Me's system and all of that type of stuff, catch up with the team, learn how Ron Rivera wants things ran, you never know. Jamin Crowder may have an honest chance to have an impact on his team and actually contribute in regular season games. And again, I'm going to keep speaking it into existence, postseason games as well. Also, man, I know Jamison Crowder is happy. You got to remember, he's a Duke alumni. He just went back to his former team where he had his best days of his career. And his old team, his alum, Duke, had that big upset over Clemson just a few days ago. I know Jamison Crowder is on cloud nine right now. I know he's super happy. He gets called up to the 53-man roster. He's the happiest person on the planet right now moving on the washington commanders announced their 2023 captains on special teams tressway and jeremy reeves of course on defense jonathan allen and kendall fuller and then on offense of course terry mclaurin but also sam howe man shouts out to sam howe he was voted captain by his fellow teammates that means he stepped up he's answered to the call eric Bieniemy did not only put a lot on his plate as far as x's and o's wise but he demanded that sam howe be the leader even if something wasn't necessarily sam howe's fault eric Bieniemy would yell at him to make sure that he got everybody in line so that basically sam howe can basically echo Eric Bieniemy's thoughts even without Eric Bieniemy having to say them Sam Howell should be thinking what Eric Bieniemy's thinking and should be able to act on that and tell players to do what they're supposed to do not to do certain things and things like that he Sam Howell basically became an extension of Eric Bieniemy as far as running the offense again not just X's and O's wise but leadership and vocally um so that's just big time by Sam Howell and the players clearly noticed by naming him the captain and I know a lot of people are probably out there thinking well all quarterbacks are named captain right well not necessarily uh, I mean Sam Howell is a quarterback quarterbacks are typically named captains of the team especially on the offensive side of the ball but hey man the Falcons have yet to name Desmond Ritter their captain this season and I don't think they ever will um so you know I know a lot of people are looking like captains are usually or just automatically um become captains of their teams but no they're not Desmond Ritter can tell you. And then moving on, also sources in Washington are optimistic about Commanders wide receiver Terry McLaurin with a toe injury. They're saying that he's responded well to work on the field so far with a few days of practice remaining before the sold out home opener against the Arizona Cardinals. So we haven't gotten an exact update, but we're just hearing from inside information that the Commanders are more optimistic than we're led to believe. Because Ron 
Bear has refused to give any updates on Terry McLaurin and Chase Young. And then somebody asked him about it recently. I think it was yesterday. And he basically said that it is like strategic. I mean, whether they're healthy or not, we don't want the Arizona Cardinals to know until we absolutely have to tell y'all. Um, so, but again, some information that didn't come from Ron Rivera himself. He didn't say this out loud to the presser, to the fans. Um, apparently, some inside information is saying, getting the feeling that Terry McLaurin should be good to go against the Arizona Cardinals. Again, my point is, um, I don't think you need him to beat the Arizona Cardinals, so I would just go ahead and sit him um, this next week. But again, you don't want the Cardinals to know that, even if that's the commander's plan already. Like today, if the commanders already know that they don't plan on playing Terry McLaurin, they wouldn't put that information out there for everybody to know because most importantly they don't want the cardinals to know that and they don't want the cardinals to be able to game plan against that so hey man i say i prefer not to know as a fan if that gives us a strategic advantage over the opponent that we're going against next week i would love to know i would love to know some inside information to know what's really going on but hey man i'm just not plugged in like that i wish i was man but also moving on ron rivera has some really interesting comments yesterday he actually said one of my favorite things he's ever said as far as answering questions because lately he's been on a terrible run of answering press conference questions i mean that whole admitting he didn't know sam howell was as good as he was i may dedicate an entire video to just that alone because that made absolutely no sense at all and then he tried to recover by saying something else and just making it worse and it's just like man can we just let eric be enemy just do all of the talking for the commanders man ask him whatever questions you may have and stuff like that because boy ron rivera but when he was asked why the cardinals have not named the starting qb for week one just yet rivera said i would neither that's his exact quote. Hey, hey, man, that's one of my favorite quotes from him, and I completely agree right now, man. The Cardinals are going through it. They have no idea who their starting quarterback is right now week one. We don't know. Our defense doesn't know. We don't even exactly know who we're game planning for, but I'm not worried about it. Also, the commanders went ahead and made the following coaching, really, announcements. Um, they call it promotions, but we already knew a lot of these things were happening. First of all, Juan Castillo is your run game coordinator. Randy Jordan is your senior offensive assistant, along with being the running back's coach of course Travell Wharton is your offensive lines coach and he's finally recovered from having back surgery and then Todd Storm is your tight ends coach now that's a new one that's an interesting one I didn't know about the Randy Jordan update and the Todd Storm one I didn't know about those updates so those are both very interesting shouts out to Randy Jordan for getting that promotion right there and then of course Juan Castillo and Travell Wharton they've already been doing those things the entire offseason we were just waiting to announce it once Josh Harris officially bought the team and I guess that just kind of took the back burner to a lot of more important primary mandatory things that we were working on first and then now that we're just a few days away from our week one game heading into the regular season i guess it's about time for us to go ahead and announce that but that was probably just like a sheet of paper on josh harris decks that that he probably just had a coffee mug going maybe under the microwave the company microwave or whatever they were like yeah hey, we'll we'll announce those changes later man it's not that serious and they finally somebody brought it up and was like yeah the regular season's coming up it's about time to go ahead and make those announcements but ron rivera said the naming of the new coach and titles position doesn't necessarily mean player extensions will occur soon ownership group is being patient conversations about this are ongoing hey man go ahead and pay camera curl bro stop playing that's all i know oh wow update the cardinals have made a decision on who their qb1 is going to be for sunday's opener against the commanders but they won't reveal it to the public quote i ain't telling you anything unquote Man, it really honestly doesn't even matter, to be completely honest, bro. I ain't even worried about that, man. We're going to keep it pushing. Also, now for the Rico report part of this, where it's a lot of just random stuff. Former Washington guard Mark Schlereth, who was calling the commander's opener for Fox, has some seriously high praise for the current Washington left guard, Sadiq Charles. Quote, I'll tell you who looks like an absolute beast on tape. And I know everybody's going to talk about Jahan Dodson and how he's going to have a breakout year and could be a Pro Bowl type of player. And I don't disagree with that. But Sadiq Charles is absolutely freaking killing people on tape. Just killing people. There were dozens of rewindable moments in the preseason where I was like, holy S word. This guy is a one man wrecking crew. And like really good technique, great steps, good hands. I was thoroughly impressed with the way he played unquote and again it's never been the talent for Sadiq Charles for me I mean y'all know I was one of the main people hyping, hyping him up when we drafted him from LSU my whole thing was if you're the starting left tackle and arguably the best offense in college football history and Joe Burrow never really had to worry about his blind spot I mean Joe Burrow had better protection for LSU even going against Alabama than he's had so far since he's been in the NFL for the Bengals and, and uh, Sadiq Charles was a pivotal part of that it's always been the talent I, moving him to guard 
with how short his arms are. Uh, maybe you get the highest ceiling out of him at guard, but I feel like he could play well out of the one. It's never been a talent. It's just can the guy stay healthy? It's, that's just been my whole thing. Sadiq Charles has looked really great this offseason, though, in general. And then moving on, the Washington Commanders Charitable Foundation just announced that it's hosting a special after-school event tomorrow at the Boys and Girls Club, Washington, D.C. Commanders Limited partner Magic Johnson will be speaking to about 200 D.C. public school students at the event. Shouts out to y'all for that. Also, really interesting stat from Locked On Commanders. The Commanders, or by any other name, have this burgundy and gold have a 0.573 winning percentage at home since 1970 which actually ranks sixth in the nfc now a lot of that of course came from when we were the redskins when we were at our best like in at the very latest the late 90s but um still that's crazy since 1970 we have the sixth highest winning percentage at home out of the entire nfc that's really interesting man i mean i know it's been really bad and at best average pretty much my entire lifetime but going back to the 1970s man we've been doing our thing as a franchise overall and now it's time to get back to that and to hold on to that that sixth ranking and if anything only get higher up the rankings but yeah man that's the end of this video man please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video please leave a like in this video if you liked it if you learned anything stiff arm that like button stiff arm the subscription button stiff arm the bell next to that subscription man i appreciate y'all man big time shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolling the screen right now I and mean, i really appreciate y'all we have a fun season coming up i'm still working on a 53 man roster breakdown now that we officially have it i'll probably come out with that tomorrow um along with a full preview of the cardinals who are their best players where are some of our best matchups that we could take advantage of where are some areas that i'm worried about where like our weaknesses are compared to their strengths a full breakdown of the cardinals game my my score prediction who's gonna win all of that type of stuff so stay tuned for that tomorrow and i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out